the Tao Te Ching in a nutshell. We will be looking into quotes from a rather new translation of Jonathan Starr. The reasons for choosing the verses as I did is a question. What is Tao? A way that can be walked is not the way. A name that can be named is not the name. Tao is both named and nameless. As nameless, it is the origin of all things. As named, it is the mother of all things. A mind free of thought, merged within itself, beholds the essence of Tao. A mind filled with thought, identified with its own perceptions, beholds the mere form of this world. Tao and this world seem different, but in truth they are one and the same. The only difference is in what we call them. Tao is empty, yet it fills every vessel with endless supply. Tao is hidden, yet it shines in every corner of the universe. So deep, so pure, so still. It has been this way forever. You may ask, whose child is it? But I cannot say, this child was here before the great ancestor. Whatever we see or don't see, whatever exists or doesn't exist, is nothing but the creation of this supreme power. Tao is limitless, unborn, eternal. It can only be reached through the hidden creator. She is the very face of the absolute, the gate to the source of all things eternal. Hold fast to the power of the one. It will unify the body and merge it with the spirit. It will cleanse the vision and reveal the world as flawless. It will focus the life force and make one supple as a newborn. Man's true self is eternal, yet he thinks, I am this body, I will soon die. This false sense of self is the cause of all his sorrow. When a person does not identify himself with the body, tell me, what troubles could touch him? One who sees himself as everything is fit to be the guardian of the world. One who loves himself as everyone is fit to be the teacher of the world. Eyes look, but cannot see it. Ears listen, but cannot hear it. Hands grasp, but cannot touch it. Beyond the senses lies the great unity, invisible, inaudible, intangible. What rises up appears bright, what settles down appears dark. Yet there is neither darkness nor light, just an unbroken dance of shadows. From nothingness to fullness and back again to nothingness. This formless form, this imageless image, cannot be grasped by mind or might. Try to face it. In what place will you stand? Try to follow it. To what place will you go? Know that, which is beyond all beginnings, and you will know everything here and now. Know everything in this moment, and you will know the eternal Tao. Become totally empty, quiet restlessness of the mind, and then you will witness everything unfolding from emptiness. Be still. Stillness reveals the secrets of eternity. Eternity embraces the all-possible. The all-possible leads to a vision of oneness. The vision of oneness brings about universal love. Universal love supports the great truth of nature. The great truth of nature is Tao. When the greatness of Tao is present, action arises from one's own heart. When the greatness of Tao is absent, action comes from the rules of kindness and justice. If you need rules to be kind and just if you act virtuous, this is a sure sign that virtue is absent. Thus we see the great hypocrisy. 
I am but a guest in this world. While others rush about to get things done, I accept what is offered. Oh, my mind is like that of a fool, aloof to the clamor of life around me. Everyone seems so bright and alive, with the sharp distinction of day. I appear dark and dull with the blending of differences by night. I am drifting like an ocean, floating like the high winds. Everyone is so rooted in this world that I have no place to rest my head. But is it real? You ask. I say it's evidence of all creation. From the first moment to the present, the name has been sounding. It is the gate through which the universe enters, the witness by which the universe sees. How have I come to know all this? That very name has told me, the name which is sounding right here, right now. Something formless, complete in itself, there before heaven and earth, tranquil, vast, standing alone, unchanging. It provides for all things, yet cannot be exhausted. It is the mother of the universe. I do not know its name, so I call it Tao. Forced to name it further, I call it the greatness of all things, the end of all endings. I call it that which is beyond the beyond, that to which all things return. The sage travels all day, yet never leaves his inner treasure. Though the views are captivating and beg attention, he remains calm and uninvolved. Tell me. Does the lord of a great empire go out begging for a rice? One who seeks his treasure in the outer world is cut off from his own roots. Without roots, he becomes restless. Being restless, his mind is weak. And with a mind such as this, he loses all command below heaven. Tao is eternal, one without a second. If princes and kings could just hold it, all things would flock to their kingdom. Everyone would live in harmony, not by official decree, but by their own inner goodness. One who sees the things of this world as being real and self-existent has lost sight of the truth. One who knows the truth that underlies all things lives in this world without danger. To him, every word reflects the universe. Every moment brings enlightenment. One may look for fulfillment in this world, but his longings will never be exhausted. The only thing he ever finds is that he himself is exhausted. When Tao is lost, one must learn the rules of virtue. When virtue is lost, the rules of kindness when kindness is lost, the rules of justice. When justice is lost, the rules of conduct. And when the high-blown rules of conduct are not followed, people are seized by the arm and it is forced on them. The rules of conduct are just an outer show of devotion and loyalty, quite confusing to the heart. And when men rely on these rules for guidance, oh, what ignorance abounds. When the best seeker hears of Tao, he strives with great effort to know it. When an average seeker hears of Tao, he thinks of it now and again. When the poorest seeker hears of Tao, he laughs out loud. Tao is always becoming what we have need for it to become. If it could not do this, it would not be Tao. To become learned, gain daily. To obtain Tao, reduce daily. Reduce and reduce again until all action is reduced to non-action. Then no one is left, nothing is done, yet nothing is left undone. The sun in all its glory reveals but a passing world. Only the inner light illumines eternity. Only that light can guide us back home. 
Have faith. Follow your own shining. Be aware of your own awareness. On the darkest nights, you will not stumble. On the brightest days, you will not blink. This is called the practice of eternal light. If I had the least bit of wisdom, I could follow the path of Tao quite well. My only fear would be trying to go my own way. The great path is simple and direct, yet people love to take the side routes. Tao is the treasure house, the true nature, the secret source of everything. It is the great wealth of those who are awake, the great protector of those still sleeping. If a person seems wicked, do not cast him away. Awaken him with your words, elevate him with your deeds, requite his injury with your kindness. Do not cast him away, cast away his wickedness. The best warrior leads without haste, fights without anger, overcomes without confrontation. He puts himself below and brings out the highest in his men. This is the virtue of not confronting, of working with the abilities you have, of complying with the laws of heaven. This is the ancient path that leads to perfection. There is no greater misfortune than feeling I have an enemy. For when I and enemy exist together, there is no room left for my treasure. Thus, when two opponents meet, the one without an enemy will surely triumph. When the people do not fear worldly power, a greater power will arrive. Don't limit the view of yourself. Don't despise the conditions of your birth. Don't resist the natural course of your life. In this way, you will never weary of this world. The sage knows himself, but not as himself. He loves himself, but not as himself. He honors himself, but not as himself. Thus he discards the view of his own self and chooses the view of the universe. Why do the people regard death so lightly? Because they are so involved with their own living. That's why they regard death so lightly. In the end, the treasure of life is missed by those who hold on and gain by those who let go.